I'm sure a lot of you were wondering what's going on right now with old CM Punk. Who? And if you're tuning in for that, I'm sorry, we're not going to talk about it at all. Okay? I'm going to save that for the Dave show. He has been terminated by AEW. Hmm. For cause. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a great cage match between these two. You know, this could have main evented this show. One of Miz's insults was that if you had asked me for my advice, I'd have told you not to be a mermaid in the Barbie movie. Yes, the star of Marine 2 is scolding the guy who has a speaking line in a $1.4 billion film. Okay. If you like told AI, told Chat GPT Cena to like animate a WWF professional wrestling match, it would be LA Knight versus The Miz with John Cena the robot as referee. That's exactly what this was. I see Cody Rhodes is, as always, taking forever and ever and ever to get to the goddamn ring. I mute this. I start to watch football highlights on Twitter. I want to mute the show. Cody is talking about how every talk show segment is exactly the same. And I said, fuck this. I went to the bathroom and I shaved my back. There's an important task to do. I finished. There was a video package going on. I continued to say, fuck this. I went to the kitchen and began to do dishes. I missed nothing. I was doing chores. A better use of my time than however the hell long this went. I actually thought the match, I would go as far as say it was good. No, you're wrong. You're factually wrong. It was a bad match. My rating for this match was yuck. <laughs> Do you need to go shave your back again or something like that? Maybe shave your front? This pay-per-view was fucking awesome. Good. God damn. For those keeping score, Hangman Page was massively over as a baby face. Kenny Omega was totally over as a baby face. The Young Bucks, ironically... Got the CM Punk treatment in CM Punk's hometown. They did. Half of them were booing. The other half were cheering the Young Bucks. And Samoa Joe comes out on the ramp and he yes. shoves MJF. Oh, it was the NXT Brooklyn show. If you go to Twitter, go to the gift button and type MJF Joe, it comes up. Samoa Joe grabs him in a guillotine. A choke, all, you say. All of the guys have to, Yeah, this was the second time that there was a wild guillotine incident before a Samoa Joe match. Yes people began to chant slap that meat meat forever God. meat for holy, holy meat. meat a video appears on the screen with the words hot and flexible yes out comes the former lana she comes out as her husband is being choked to death and strikes a pose now then oh my lord hmm. you know this danielson fella he's a he's a sweet person nice guy <laughs> mm -hmm. And an absolute total psychopath. He is a friendly man, a loyal man, a creative man, an intelligent man, and a sadistic, cruel, evil son of a bitch. Kenny Omega versus Kanosuke Takeshita. I will get the negative out of the way first. I would love it if Kenny Omega would stop bumping onto his head every match. And John Moxley hits the greatest Death Rider of all time and gets the pin. Yes, he and did. The rain is over. I had thoughts of like, doesn't matter what you do, eventually the end will come. I'm like reflecting on my own mortality. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I know you wanted the guy to win and all, but it was much better that this happened in the main event of a pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In a moment that will last forever. Granny, you are number one. Put that guilt on your grandson. Don't visit your grandmother, Brian. Granny, I was in a bad mood, but watching you dance to that song sure cheered me up. Good. Vinny is in, in Florida. He went to Tampa. He said he slept 10 minutes on a red-eye flight from Seattle to Tampa, drove two-plus hours to Punta Gorda, ate a barbecue shrimp bacon omelet at John Ski's. Did we really need all of this information? Arrived at Dad's and crashed for the afternoon, went out for wow. burgers and beer, and went to the park to watch the sunset. Hmm. And now he's drinking. Give Granny and Brian a tag team name. No flips, guilt trips. That's a good one. Polka and pork chops. Two bloke girls. That's kind of funny. The new Midnight Pork Chop Express guilt train professional wrestling tag team from Bothell. Uh, Kane, the Undertaker, versus oh. Mario Thanksgiving. Mancini. Kane, Kane, the Undertaker. Uh, what do you think of Reigns getting fired? What? You, yeah, you mean CM, CM Punk? Punk. I heard Reigns might get fired. No. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I'd be I'd be surprised for being too dominant. Yeah, he might. You sure they weren't talking about Luther Reigns? No. 
all my older siblings decided they were going to have a party. And guess what they used for uh, cigarette tobacco? Weed. Dry cow manure. What? Cow manure. Yeah, dry. They smoked dry, stuff. dry cow manure. Huh. Is there mushrooms in the cow manure? My mom made beer. And okay. we would, we would keep Out of cow in, manure or did she use something else? They were both totally awesome matches. But man, you could not have two more different matches that are both professional wrestling than Terry Funk and Ric Flair in an I Quit match. And then the Wyatt family versus the Shield. But goddamn, they were great. Paul Fontaine. Who the fuck are you, Paul? I'm uh, I'm other people. But the more I thought about it, the more this John Moxley versus A.R. Fox championship match was just like befuddling to me. Nobody gives a fuck about this title except for this bloke here. Yeah. And did you see who he's wrestling? Who Moxley's wrestling on Saturday? I I another, did not see it yet. Who is it? Another open challenge. Action Andretti. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. I'm really digging uh, Roddy Strong and his glasses as as a geek. They did a similar his glasses video. Glasses and his they... fucking neck brace. I mean, you can say whatever you want about you know the calling him fat and everything like that, but it's MJF's gimmick. He's a dick. And so he decided to be a dick to this guy. And uh, the guy was also a dick. So they, uh, and actually, they made fun of each other's dicks. So there was a lot of uh, dick related (laughs) stuff here in this promo. Chit up, tits out, and watch out for the shoe. And then she storms off the camera, and Renee's watching, watching. And then the minute she takes her eye off it, the shoe comes flying. This is so great. I don't know how she keeps getting away with saying tits on TV every week, but. It's wonderful. I think the highlight of this segment was actually when old Prince Nana decided that his new gimmick is he will dance to Swerve's music. People are going to make a big deal about the fact that this main event lost a ton of viewers. Well, I would say the two commercial breaks in the last 10 minutes of the show. Why do people not understand this commercial break thing? If you have two commercial breaks during a segment, that quarter is going to die. It doesn't matter if Roman Reigns is in the segment or John Cena, which will never happen, by the way. There'll never be two commercial breaks in a Roman Reigns segment. After the match, Becky appears on the big screen. It is time for me to come to NXT next Tuesday. Not just an appearance. Not just an appearance. Straight out of AW Dynamite, Tiffany and Becky will be for the championship. You know, Tyler Bate is, he's not that short. I mean, he's short. But when you put him underneath Dabakato... <laughs> For the airplane spin, he looks like Puppet, the psycho dwarf from those NWA TNA shows. It's like Puppet. He like looks doing this so tiny, yeah. but he spins his fucker around and around, and the fans start chanting, big, strong boy, and they start chanting, this is awesome, and I'm like, holy shit, he got a fucking this is awesome chant with a match with fucking Dabakato. Then we had the highlight of the show. Oh, yeah. Which is Tiffany Stratton saying... So I'll see you next Tuesday, bitch. Toodles. And the fucking crowd (laughs) gasped at see you next week. Probably more than bitch. And the announcers gasped and they were like, holy shit, this is going to be some crazy shit. He brings those steps high in the air and they just cut to a black screen. And you hear a loud clang and the announcers fucking freak out. And we're supposed to believe that he has crushed his skull. Like a grape. They've shown some of the stuff on social media and didn't look, it doesn't look quite as good. So I don't know what they're going to show us next week, but uh, it's kind of different. They tried something new. Uh, I think they got to show us nothing. The footage so horrific. We cannot air it here on this program. We'll talk to you again after a while. Toodles. <laughs>